Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. Glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin in day 42, February 11th, Numbers 5 to 8. The nation cleansed for worship. Overview. God now further prepares the nation for the coming trip to Canaan by commanding Moses to deal with four specific problem areas. Moral defilement. Jealous suspicion, unmet needs in the tabernacle, and uncleansed Levites in the service of the Lord. Israel's purity and moral conduct and interpersonal relationship is of utmost importance because the Holy God of Israel lives in her camp. Chapter 5, 3. Chapter 5. Defilement and morals. Cleansing. Chapter 6. Dedication of service. Chapter 7. Offerings of the leaders. Chapter 8. Offerings of the Levites. Dedication. Insight. The most beautiful smile. Numbers 6, 24 to 26. This passage, known as the Aaronic Blessing, chapter 6, 24 to 26, is frequently heard at the end of church services. However, It is not the leader, the pastor, or the priest blessing the people. They only act on God's behalf. This blessing reveals God's heart of love and his intention to bring good to his people in their daily lives. Insight. Twelve offerings in one service. Numbers 7, 10 to 83. Even though the offerings of the twelve leaders of the tribes of Israel given on the day the tabernacle worship was inaugurated, were identical, each is recorded in great detail, showing God's pleasure with their individual and generous gifts. Chapter 7, 10 to 83. Numbers, chapter 5. Purity in Israel's camp. The Lord gave these instructions to Moses. Command the people of Israel to remove from the camp anyone who has a skin disease or a discharge who has become ceremonially unclean by touching a dead person. This command applies to men and women alike. Remove them so they will not defile the camp in which I live among them. So the Israelites did as the Lord had commanded Moses and removed such people from the camp. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If any of the people, men or women, Betray the Lord by doing wrong to another person. They are guilty. They must confess their sin and make full restitution for what they have done, adding an additional 20% and returning it to the person who was wronged. But if the person who was wronged is dead and there are no near relatives to whom restitution can be made, the payment belongs to the Lord and must be given to the priest. Those who are guilty must also bring a ram as a sacrifice, and they will be purified and made right with the Lord. All the sacred offerings that the Israelites bring to a priest will belong to him. Each priest may keep all the sacred donations that he receives. Protecting Marital Faithfulness And the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Suppose a man's wife goes astray and she is unfaithful to her husband and has sex with another man, but neither her husband nor anyone else knows about it. She has defiled herself even though there was no witness and she was not caught in the act. If her husband becomes jealous and is suspicious of his wife and needs to know whether or not she has defiled herself, the husband must bring his wife to the priest. He must also bring an offering of two quarts of barley flour to be presented on her behalf. 
Do not mix it with olive oil or frankincense, for it is a jealousy offering, an offering to prove whether or not she is guilty. The priest will then present her to stand trial before the Lord. He must take some holy water in a clay jar and pour into it dust he has taken from the tabernacle floor. When the priest has presented the woman before the Lord, he must unbind her hair and place in her hands the offering of proof, the jealousy offering to determine whether her husband's suspicions are justified. The priest will stand before her holding the jar of bitter water that brings a curse to those who are guilty. The priest will then put the woman under oath and say to her, If no other man has had sex with you, and you have not gone astray and defiled yourself while under your husband's authority, may you be immune from the effects of this bitter water that brings on the curse. But if you have gone astray by being unfaithful to your husband, and have defiled yourself by having sex with another man. At this point, the priest must put the woman under oath by saying, May the people know that the Lord's curse is upon you when he makes you infertile, causing your womb to shrivel and your abdomen to swell. Now may this water that brings the curse enter your body and cause your abdomen to swell and your womb to shrivel. And the woman will be required to say, Yes. Let it be so. And the priest will write these curses on a piece of leather and wash them off into the bitter water. He will make the woman drink the bitter water that brings on the curse. When the water enters her body, it will cause bitter suffering if she is guilty. The priest will take the jealousy offering from the woman's hand, lift it up before the Lord and carry it to the altar. He will take a handful of the flour as a token portion, and burn it on the altar, and he will require the woman to drink the water. If she has defiled herself by being unfaithful to her husband, the water that brings the curse will cause bitter suffering. Her abdomen will swell, and her womb will shrink, and her name will become a curse among the people. But if she has not defiled herself and is pure, then she will be unharmed, and will still be able to have children. This is the ritual law for dealing with the suspicion. If a woman goes astray and defiles herself while under her husband's authority, or if a man becomes jealous and is suspicious that his wife has been unfaithful, the husband must present his wife before the Lord, and the priest will apply this entire ritual law to her. The husband will be innocent of any guilt in this matter, but his wife will be held accountable for her sin. Numbers chapter 6 Nazarite Laws Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If any of the people, either men or women, take the special vow of a Nazarite, setting themselves apart to the Lord in a special way, they must give up wine and other alcoholic drinks. They must not use vinegar made from wine or from other alcoholic drinks. They must not drink fresh grape juice, and they must not eat grapes or raisins. As long as they are bound by their Nazarite vow, they are not allowed to eat or drink anything that comes from a grapevine, not even the grape seeds or skins. They must never cut their hair throughout the time of their vow, for they are holy and set apart to the Lord. Until the time of their vow has been fulfilled, they must let their hair grow long, and they must not go near a dead body during the entire period of their vow to the Lord. Even if the dead person is their own father, mother, brother, or sister, they must not defile themselves, for the hair on their head is the symbol of their separation to God. This requirement applies as long as they are set apart to the Lord. If someone falls dead beside them, the hair they have dedicated will be defiled. They must wait for seven days and then shave their heads. They will be cleansed from their defilement. On the eighth day, they must bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons to the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will offer one of the birds for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. In this way, he will purify them from the guilt they incurred 
through contact with the dead body. Then they must reaffirm their commitment and let their hair begin to grow again. The days of their vow that were completed before their defilement no longer count. They must rededicate themselves to the Lord as a Nazarite for the full term of their vow, and each must bring a one-year-old male lamb for a guilt offering. This is the ritual law for Nazarites. At the conclusion of their time of separation as Nazarites, they must each go to the entrance of the tabernacle and offer their sacrifices to the Lord. A one-year-old male lamb without defect for a burnt offering, a one-year-old female lamb without defect for a sin offering, a ram without defect for a peace offering, a basket of bread made without yeast, Cakes of choice flour mixed with olive oil and wafers spread with olive oil along with their prescribed grain offerings and liquid offerings. The priests will present these offerings before the Lord. First the sin offering and the burnt offering. Then the ram for a peace offering along with the basket of bread made without yeast. The priest must also present the prescribed grain offering and liquid offering to the Lord. Then the Nazarites will shave their heads at the entrance of the tabernacle. They will take the hair that had been dedicated and place it on the fire beneath the peace offering sacrifice. After the Nazarite's head has been shaved, the priest will take for each of them the boiled shoulder of the ram, and he will take from the basket a cake and a wafer made without yeast. He will put them all into the Nazarite's hands. Then the priest will lift them up as a special offering before the Lord. These are holy portions for the priest, along with the breast of the special offering and the thigh of the sacred offering that are lifted up before the Lord. After this ceremony, the Nazarites may again drink wine. This is the ritual law of the Nazarites who vow to bring these offerings to the Lord. They may also bring additional offerings if they can afford it. And they must be careful to do whatever they vowed when they set themselves apart as Nazarites. The priestly blessing. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with this special blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, I myself will bless them. Numbers chapter 7 Offerings of Dedication On the day Moses set up the tabernacle, he anointed it and set it apart as holy. He also anointed and set apart all its furnishings and the altar with its utensils. Then the leaders of Israel, the tribal leaders who had registered the troops, came and brought their offerings. Together they brought six large wagons and twelve oxen. There was a wagon for every two leaders and an ox for each leader. They presented these to the Lord in front of the tabernacle. Then the Lord said to Moses, Receive their gifts and use these oxen and wagons for transporting the tabernacle. Distribute them among the Levites according to the work they have to do. So Moses took the wagons and oxen and presented them to the Levites. He gave two wagons and four oxen to the Gershonite division for their work. And he gave four wagons and eight oxen to the Merorite division for their work. All their work was done under the leadership of Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest. But he gave none of the wagons or oxen to the Kohathite division, since they were required to carry the sacred objects of the tabernacle on their shoulders. The leaders also presented dedication gifts for the altar at the time it was anointed. They each placed their gifts before the altar. The Lord said to Moses, Let one leader bring his gift each day for the dedication of the altar. On the first day, Nashon, son of Aminadab, leader of the tribe of Judah, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three quarter pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. 
These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Nashon, son of Aminadab. On the second day, Nathaniel, son of Zuah, leader of the tribe of Issachar, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three quarter pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces for which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Nathaniel, son of Zuah. On the third day, Eliab, son of Helon, leader of the tribe of Zebulun, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds, a silver basin, weighing one and three quarter pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Eliab, son of Helon. On the fourth day, Eleazar, son of Shedur, leader of the tribe of Reuben, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three quarter pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Eleazar, son of Shedur. On the fifth day, Shelumiel, son of Jerashadai, leader of the tribe of Simeon, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three quarter pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat offering for sin. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Shelumiel, son of Jerashadai. On the sixth day, Eliasaph, son of Duel, leader of the tribe of Gad, presenting his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three quarter pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Eliasaph, son of Duel. On the seventh day, Elishama, son of Aminahad, leader of the tribe of Ephraim, presented his offering. 
His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three quarter pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Elishama, son of Aminahad. On the eighth day, Gamaliel, son of Petazur, leader of the tribe of Manasseh, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds, a silver basin weighing one and three quarter pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Gamaliel, son of Pedahur. On the ninth day, Abaddon, son of Gideoni, leader of the tribe of Benjamin, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds, and a silver basin weighing one and three quarter pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour, moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Abaddon, son of Gideoni. On the tenth day, Ahiza, son of Aminashadai, leader of the tribe of Dan, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three quarter pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Ahiza, son of Aminashadai. On the eleventh day, Pajiel, son of Okran, leader of the tribe of Asher, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three quarter pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour, moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Pajiel, son of Okran. On the twelfth day, Ahira, son of Enon, leader of the tribe of Naphtali, presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and a quarter pounds and a silver basin weighing one and three quarter pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. These were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and a one-year-old male lamb for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Ehera, son of Enon. 
So this was the dedication offering brought by the leaders of Israel at the time the altar was anointed. Twelve silver platters, twelve silver basins, and twelve gold incense containers. Each silver platter weighed three and a quarter pounds, and each silver basin weighed one and three quarter pounds. The total weight of the silver was sixty pounds, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. Each of the twelve gold containers that was filled with incense weighed four ounces, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. The total weight of the gold was three pounds. Twelve young bulls, twelve rams, and twelve one-year-old male lambs were donated for the burnt offerings along with their prescribed grain offerings. Twelve male goats were brought for the sin offerings. Twenty-four bulls, sixty rams, sixty male goats, and sixty one-year-old male lambs were donated for the peace offerings. This was the dedication offering for the altar after it was anointed. Whenever Moses went into the tabernacle to speak with the Lord, he heard the voice speaking to him from between the two cherubim above the ark's cover, the place of atonement that rests on the ark of the covenant. The Lord spoke to him from there. Numbers chapter 8 Preparing the Lamps The Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron the following instructions. When you set up the seven lamps in the lampstand, Place them so their light shines forward in front of the lampstand. So Aaron did this. He set up the seven lamps so they reflected their light forward just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The entire lampstand from its base to its decorative blossoms are made of beaten gold. It was built according to the exact design the Lord had shown Moses. The Levites dedicated. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now set the Levites apart from the rest of the people of Israel and make them ceremonial clean. Do this by sprinkling them with the water of the purification and have them shave their entire body and wash their clothing. Then they will be ceremonially clean. Have them bring a young bull and a grain offering of choice flour moistened with olive oil along with a second young bull for a sin offering. Then assemble the whole community of Israel and present the Levites at the entrance of the tabernacle. When you present the Levites before the Lord, the people of Israel must lay their hands on them. Raising his hands, Aaron must then present the Levites to the Lord as a special offering from the people of Israel, thus dedicated them to the Lord's service. Next, the Levites will lay their hands on the heads of the young bulls, present one as a sin offering, and the other is a burnt offering to the Lord to purify the Levites and make them right with the Lord. Then, have the Levites stand in front of Aaron and his sons and raise your hands and present them as a special offering to the Lord. In this way, you will set the Levites apart from the rest of the people of Israel and the Levites will belong to me. After this, they may go into the tabernacle to do their work because you have purified them and presented them as a special offering. Of all the people of Israel, the Levites are reserved for me. I have claimed them for myself in place of all the firstborn sons of the Israelites. I have taken the Levites as their substitute, for all the firstborn males among the people of Israel are mine, both of people and animals. I set them apart for myself on the day I struck down all the firstborn sons of the Egyptians. Yes, I have claimed the Levites in place of all the firstborn sons of Israel, and all of the Israelites I have assigned to the Levites, to Aaron and his sons, they will serve in the tabernacle on behalf of the Israelites and make sacrifices to purify the people so no plague will strike them when they approach the sanctuary. So Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel dedicated the Levites, carefully following all the Lord's instructions to Moses. The Levites purified themselves from sin and washed their clothes, and Aaron lifted them up and presented them to the Lord as a special offering. He then offered a sacrifice to purify them and make them right with the Lord. After the Levites went into the tabernacle to perform their duties, assisting Aaron and his sons, so they carried out the commands that the Lord gave Moses concerning the Levites. The Lord also instructed Moses, This is the rule 
the Levites must follow. They must begin serving in the tabernacle at the age of 25, and they must retire at the age of 50. After retirement, they may assist their fellow Levites by serving as gods at the tabernacle, but they may not officiate in the service. This is how you must assign duties to the Levites. My Daily Walk Living a holy life is what Leviticus and Numbers are all about, but this is easier said than done because it involves maintaining personal purity while rubbing shoulders with a decidedly impure world. As God prepared Israel to enter a land dominated by pagan influences, he knew his people would be exposed to all manner of evil, so he required that they live a completely different way. Israel was to witness about the true God in the midst of corruption, and the nation couldn't do that while hidden away in the wilderness. Only as Israel's pagan neighbors saw the nation's godly lifestyle would they be influenced towards righteousness. Are the people around you influenced by your distinctive lifestyle, or do you blend inconspicuously into the world around you? Select one godly lifestyle goal for this coming week and make it your project in purity. A godly life is always the best advertisement for Christianity. That's all for today, my friends. It was great reading along with you. Have a great day. God bless. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace.